There, by the way, there, there, there is a meme. It, uh, well, it used to be more of a meme, at least, a couple months ago, before he was owning every game. It was the Saberlight aura. The more deaths Saberlight has, the more likely they to win the game, and they got four bounties. So, uh, the Saberlight aura is striking. Yes, it is, indeed. I mean, first blood, four bounties, can you ask for a better start? Uh, maybe you uh, have <laughs> someone run into him and feed him another kill. Yeah, yeah, and in fact, that's uh, what they're, they're doing. swapping. <laughs> They're late swapping. I was going to mention this. They're going to feed uh, FPC over to Saberlight. This this will be what Danok talked about on the panel, about the Pango yeah. being able to deal with the Adlons easily. Not bad. And then Weaver versus Monkey King. That should be a good lane. Weaver. Okay, so they did a very nice job here. They're perfectly playing up against the Adlons bottom. They used the Avalanche into Swashbuckle. I, like, I must say that I love the way Boom are adjusting their draft like they're making by far the most out of the draft that they can they're lane swapping correctly they put the they shift the profit into mid against the queen as we touched on they are now laning weaver against monkey and pango against enigma so a lot of the you can see the purpose as to why they picked their heroes and that is something yep. even though maybe you don't think their draft is amazing you can see why they did it and you always love to see people like execute and see the idea of what was initially behind it I love that you mentioned that because it's you can disagree with certain ideas that teams can have, right? But ultimately, a team never makes a mistake as long as there's cohesion between their ideas and execution, and that's ultimately yeah. what you look for. Uh, that's very no, cool. Also, with their item builds, it's really cool. Like the Blightstone on yes. the Tango, Tim's is going the Ring of Basilia. So, because all they want to do in this lane is whenever Eidolons are spawned, you pop Avalanche, Swashbuckle, and then it's you're not really laying against an Enigma. He's basically he's feeding you gold and XP at that point. So you're kind of mm -hmm. you found like a loophole against the hero, <laughs> which is I mean you, that's what you want to do in lanes, right? But it's very hard. Yeah, and I'm trying this again. Remember that the Eidolons do have a nice little uh, magic resist, so it's harder for the magical damage to kill them, which is why FPC had to hit. A couple of them, and FPC, thanks to the show crash, will live. You also got a good lane up top, right? Weaver versus Monkey King is, is you know, a survivable lane. Better than Pango, for sure. Yeah, I th so I, I think uh, Boom should be looking very good Dyer's in all of their top. lanes. I would say that Monkey will do okay top. He, he's definitely not going to win this lane, but I think, again, very farm-heavy lane for both sides. You have an Inch and Dazzle, two very strong laning supports that should really be helping their course a lot. Mid lane... I would really expect uh, I would really expect the Opash to pull ahead here uh, from yep. start to finish of the laning stage really. Another thing that's very annoying is that he can always control runes with the Treants, like at least deny one or force the Queen to go there early if he divides his Treants uh, one by one to top and bottom rune. So mm. yeah, no, their laning stage is going to be looking very solid I think. Yeah, that's, that's a win condition we were talking about earlier, right? As long as the lane stage gets off to a good start, and they just have to keep the momentum and never lose it. Still 1k lead, of course, because the bounty's in the first blood, but uh, it's looking better than what the first blood could indicate. A scam fights Dubu to the death. There is no creep on Dubu, so the scam's chance. Dubu activates the nature of the and the TPs. He's done. This is what you have to do against Dazzle. You commit to running away with a TP, or you commit to fighting him. There's no in-between. That's a huge stack on the bottom pole camp. Is that double or triple? I don't know if I'm seeing things. Nuts. Oh, no, it's triple. Nope. You're right. Two of the couple of foremen, huh? All right, not bad. Well, that's a triple. So Moon is always going to have to kind of be around here to stop this pull from happening. And I think whenever he gets a chance to run over, Tim said this to the lane when the Eidolons are there. So I would say that Tim's landing stage is pretty simple right now. Eidolons are there, you drop the Adler, swash buckle. Task is ever out of position, you go you go for the pull. As top, we have a lot of trading going on. Yep, the other wants to kill Scam as an Aura Venom here, so there's a chance actually. Plus the Battle of Strike, Scam slowed once again by the Aura Venom. Timado maybe overcommitting as Jackie puts himself between Scam and Timado. And here's the positive body block from Jackie, paying for what he did earlier. Okay, let's see. So the pull camp is basically it's like the hostage of the bottom lane. It's like keeping both like both the supports, they're gonna be stuck on that camp as FBZ. His HP isn't looking too hot. I think they might soon look to go on a little engage as Sableite is fishing for something. He has arcane boots already. No, oh, no, Tim's Okay, never mind actually. I thought that was gonna be a play, but Mumiander, he realizes it's camp time. Time to guard it yet again, so they can't pull to this triple stack. Uh, this is a little scary. So these lanes, especially like the sideline duo lanes, like minute three, four, five, if someone is able to... I mean, everyone knows that Ring of Basilius helps both the people lane, right? Uh, it's a similar story with the Arcane Boots here. The Tusk and the Enigma, they basically have infinite mana, and you don't really have anyone. The Scam Top is in a lot of trouble. He's gonna get caught off. It's... Yep. 
very scary to play on the side one on one when the enemy carry is a monkey king. Probably the best carry at rotating over and helping out his support, right? So he just got a little bit caught on the side. Which is probably the best hero to deal with Dazzle as a result, right? Because Dazzle, especially in the core role, which he's playing now, he wants to trade against yeah. the other support like that. Absolutely. It's basically you mitigate what Dazzle wants to do at all times. You basically yeah. you just punish him when he will go for it. So yeah. But now is Prophet Ulti is available. Sonic Wave is too. So I think both mid laners will should look to try and get involved at least somehow. Most likely on a side lane or for TSM again. It's more so that he wants someone to come to his lane. Unless there's a tower dive happening, that's the only way I think that the queen would leave his lane here. And for and MP, it's just Radiant like you said, the opportunity, right? Whatever time. arises, they're just gonna go for it. Back yeah. Nature's a very powerful spike. It's uh, similar to the game we saw earlier, right? With the Fnatic Zeus. Yep. They have a tower dive pop. Stimado. They have a Wrath of Nature already charged, but Stimado, yeah, making sure to keep him in vision. Wrath of Nature did not reach him though. However, there's enough heroes here to kill him regardless. It seems like at least Battle Strike, Dimado, getting away, but Shukuchi will get close to him and finish him off. This boom can even turn into a tower because they rotated on the catapult. However, mid lane and Chantry's doing her usual shenanigans. She might also put a little pressure for this tower, which is why the boom comes in. They smell oh, the TP and they force him to cancel. Oh, actually, Moon canceled the TP, sorry. Moon might die by this. Pay for it, but this is great. Uh, T, this is some very high level Dota that you can see. So, yes. I, I believe that they understand that when this Nature's Prophet ganks the side, it is really hard for us to respond. Like, Dubu understands that, okay, when he comes top, what, what do I do? Take over a tree and then he laughs at me? No, so he's gonna go mid knowing that he will leave the lane. So that they can at least trade and punish. So their best reaction here wasn't defensively, it was to do something completely different different offensively to go mid so they actually get a they trade their safe and tower for the enemy mid tier one tower and now we even have a tower that bottom on fbz yeah we Radiant's do fbz in the trees saber saber life. can't break anymore <laughs> oh he is oh, no. you, you know he wants to i oh, found him he's watch buckles it's fine, it's fine. Instructions are we have a tp the saber light doesn't have a black hole but they almost kill him with sonic wave. wave that was very close however nice tp timing by fbz no doubt in his mind <laughs> he, he knew he was getting out though. Don't worry. Don't yeah. sweat it. Don't worry. This uh, does hurt Bryle a little bit though. He used... Uh, I guess he TP to this lane because he has no TP left. He used all his mana. That was his DD rune and the Sonic Wave. Uh, I do like a lot that Saberlight is handing him the lane right now um, after this play because he's an Igwe and he can just farm the jungle. He has his Eidolons, give the wave to Bryle real quick. He's gonna fill up the spot at least halfway oh, with the battle oh. to refill. Pop lane. Yeah, the Wrath of Nature almost sentenced him out to an early death, but Jackie thought about uh, that. Really? We have a black hole here for Saberlight here. though. Yeah, oh, he's in range. He's no just great. barely in range. I don't know how much they want to commit on a Battle Strike yet. It's a, it's a hard play to make because you saw the Dazzle heal. I, I think there's a very low chance you commit for the play because the chance of Dazzle just having Grave, right? And then you pop the time lapse after is just... It's too high. Like, you don't know that Dazzle doesn't have Grave. Do you, you take out the calculator, right? <laughs> you need, like, calculate how much does Shadow Wave heal? Okay, how much does Poison Touch last? Mm -hmm, and then you do the the math, quick math, and see if he has Shadow Grave or not. And it turns out you're an NA team, so you can't do math on that. <laughs> oh, no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you have experience, Kazu. Yeah, he's years in Quincy. I have played with them, so, you know, I I can say these things. It's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Tim's, uh, he goes back to the mid lane, we're covering this tower that's been Radiant dropped. There's no place to farm in the mid lane anymore, though, so that was a huge play by TSM. And that's why the support has to cover this lane instead. Yeah, well, that was really, really nice for them. Now you have somewhat of a, a similar transition to what we had in the last game, right? Where the Lycan at some point went into the safe lane. You don't really have to do this with Enigma, but again, he is kind of the best guy to push out this top lane. Mm -hmm. Not only to do it safely, but also to get the most out of it, as TSM smoke into the enemy jungle right now. Yeah, and they find an FPC. FPC who has the Rolling Thunder, and it's time to get it off. Now Moon could be in trouble, does get the wall off from the Ice Shards. Not gonna work in his favor. Small little vault from the Tumblr story to get FPC through the Ice Shards, but no kill onto Moon Meander. Some neutral items in specific games are actually beautiful. He can use the big pole disc, uh, the Tumblr's toy to get around the ice shards. As I've never seen this. I hate playing Pang against Tusk. And this can actually have a huge impact. That's amazing. As long as you don't take damage, of course. Like, you can just bounce over the ice shards and not be blocked. So that's really cool. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's just, the small things. Actually, Peng has some really cool interactions by using Jeff. Like the pig pole is also a really nice one. Camouflages your rolling thunder, that's always fun. <laughs> yeah. 
Hmm, what are we gonna have happening next? So Yopaj is gonna look to farm his Orchid. The game, oh, top lane. Ooh. Yeah, mid as well. That was play. tight. Tims, he went a little bit too far here. They can kill him with Shadow Strike damage. Scam doesn't have Shadow Wave, so no coming into the Sano Sonic Wave. Just an easy kill onto Tims. Very unusual. You see a kill around the tier two this early on. I get, was it with the Hurricane into some slows? Yes. Uh, okay, yeah, so I essentially see. what happened is Tim's committed to the Queen of Pain kill, and then Tim's realized, oh, I'm, there's no way I'm killing her. Uh, I and see. Bottom, they're looking to set up on Monkey. Close. It's not too easy right now for Boom to get these kills. Uh, so from what I can see watching these Boom games today is that they have these type of drafts where kills don't really happen too fast for them. They need a lot of heroes to actually succeed in kills, which makes it, I would say, a little easier for the enemy not only to read the play, but also react to their plays. Uh, I would say right now they need this Orchid to come online. Obviously, Tim's on a tiny. He's nowhere close to Blink Dagger. He spent gold on the Basilius to help FPZ early on in the laning stage. Their map is shrinking a little bit, and they don't have too many playmakers. It's kind of FPZ, but as we mentioned before, his lane was okay at best. He's gonna rush a Blink Dagger, which he won't have for a while. So right now, Boom are gonna be in a bit of a slow phase for like another one, two Radiant minutes. They need the tower. Orchid and then attack. look to smoke up the tiny with the pango and in the meantime tsm have a little bit of free reign here on the map enigma can keep shoving waves the Eng can keep pushing waves both monkey and queen are very mobile right blink scream you have the primal spring and then you have task moon he's just gonna he's kind of free to do whatever he likes to do maybe break a smoke throw some ice shards on the pango as we have another smoke from Boom Esports, they might find a little Enchantress. Yeah, it's just Dubu though, who doesn't have level 6 just yet, tries to whirl with himself to safety, that's not gonna work, sorry, Hurricane. And it's going to be the Wildling Ripper who's also gonna pay with his life on that. Saber Light comes in with a black hole! They did this with a simple creep! The follow needs to be here, Sonic Wave will finally reach as FPZ dies, Tim's though gets Shallow Grave, Scam wanted to make sure to save his friendly support. Unfortunately, he himself will have to die as a result, and it seems like Tim's will die regardless. So, a lot of much to do about nothing, essentially, for poor Boom. We'll only get a kill on a five. Really nice turn play by uh, TSM. So Dubu is like in the type of position where if he dies there, it's not the end of the world. Come As we can see, it was a smoke. Uh, Dubu should be fine in top jungle. It's just saying hello to the Weaver. Uh, but back to the point about the smoke. So he not only eats the smoke, but if it takes too long to get the kill or if they overstay after, his team can come by, come for the counter play. Saberlight with the, both the Thunder's Toy and Blink Dagger again, joining his team and being very mobile. Gets off a great black hole. And again, I think after this fight, Boom should want to wait for their items right now. 400 gold for the Orchid, 400 gold for the Blink Dagger. Tiny will not get his, right? As here again on the replay, you can see it's a beautiful black hole, both on the edge. Even Bryle goes behind, tries to also clip the Dazzle with the Sonic Wave to push them all together. And yeah, Boom right now, as I said, they just get their items, then go for a smoke. The Weaver is kind of strong, but he can't do so much on his own. Black Hole will still be down by the time you get the Blink and the Orchid, and then it's go time. Hopefully they can uh, just delay the game enough for that to happen. Boom. Still playing aggressively with these uh, these farming patterns. At least FPC isn't completely the enemy jungle. Can they punish this? They need more heroes. I think these two on their own should not be able to get this kill. He's also very mobile. I would actually say that he's doing a very nice job. Bottom Dubu is going to pressure a lot. He's probably going to pay with his life, but he took 30% of the tower. And again, this is like four heroes. So I don't actually mind this death at all. Orchid now revealed on your part as well, so that's the no time for them. This is also allowing Moon to push the top lane back in with his max Aisha build in mid lane. FPZ should be okay. Let's see what Boom can make out of the smoke. Yeah, they smoke, trying to bait out on FPZ, but they didn't overcommit to FPZ. No, maybe Boom will go to the enemy triangle. Yopash, of course, can Radiant's always TP, so it's technically a four man smoke attack. here. Setting up vision first. Mumia actually breaks the smoke. Not the best target to go on. At least you get a kill. Go. There you go, Moon is dead, and now TSM consider counter initiating. Save her life. No black hole. They're just blinking in menacingly. Nice job by them. So a lot of times when this happens, where you get a kill around mid lane, but you can't really transition it into a mid tower. Okay, so they see Dubu on the war, but they can't punish here. I think right now, just split to the side lanes, let the Weaver push up bottom. And again, a lot of the Boom Esports heroes, they're very strong right now, right? I would say even the Tiny is somewhat strong. 
but this is the type of moment where you can go and greet up your blink dagger a bit. Like right now, Tim's is top, he can farm his blink or set up for a kill, and his teammates are actually strong enough to fight as four. And while you let them fight for one, two minutes, he's gonna get to finish his blink dagger, and then he can also join his team and he's even stronger. So that would right now make the most sense for their lineup. BZ will be the one to block the smoke for now. And it's a blink in time. Yeah, and your boss is the one who gets caught instead. But your boss actually can't keep up from behind. Kim's comes by. They throw in Saber Light. They kill off Saber Light. No threat of Black Hole. It he, he wasn't even on cooldown anymore. Moomiander dies as well. And it worked. It worked. A little too deep there by my friends from TSM. Maybe yes, watching a little bit too much Mason stream. Going a bit too far in the triangle here. Boom. They just knew, right? They, they baited him into this play. They knew the whole time that if they put Yopaj, the juicy little Chapoy, they were going to go too far and overcommit. Great play, play. Great play. Uh, uh, I also, Yopaj, this guy has some fast fingers. Like earlier with the quick hex, <laughs> this time the quick Orchid onto Saberlight, not like, not look, can't speak for some reason. Not letting him get off any spells, and then TSM overreach. They get turned on by the Pango. As Dulu, hello. Maybe too much of a chat there, just walking in and dying. I guess he stopped Roche. <laughs> He did, he didn't stop Roche with his body, okay, yeah, that works. True five player here. But are they actually gonna steal Roche on Dooku just committing suicide? That is... How long for the Pango roll? Wild. Okay, too long. The, yeah, too this, long. this is gonna be a fight. Time to steal this Aegis, boys. FPP, FPG, let's go. Give him vision. They just need to give vision to Pango, he will try to steal it. Sableye should like the one Oh, Sonic Wave took the Aegis too quick. They weren't expecting the Sonic Wave commitment for the Roche. That was very nicely played. Yeah, who's yeah, the chat on. now, huh? We were doubting <laughs> Dubu. This guy is no, I, a I disagree. Yeah, 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 he is. <laughs> Even when he dies, he is the biggest chat in the game, honestly. Yeah, agreed. Okay, Aegis for Timado, who's going Desolator. I really like this build. There's not enough Monkey Kings to actually go for this. Uh, mid lane, no, not much is gonna happen. The damage output is just incredibly high, and I feel like it always catches you off guard when this Monkey King has a Desolator instead of a BKB. Also, the Aegis can kind of act as a BKB as mid. Yeah, Moon Meander target. He snowballs in time, though. They just sent a bunch of trains here. Yopaz might not be in the best position for this fight. Actually, Moon Meander was in the wrong position. They punish him for it. TSM trying to defend the tower best they can. These two stupid trains, these big trees, hard to deal with. There is the Eidolon. But uh, Saberlight just can't get close. He's waiting for the pot potential Black Hole opportunity. As the Mado goes in for FPZ. Only slightly, he's poking. He doesn't actually want to commit because yeah. it's too scary. Guys, it's okay. Go to side lanes. Tiny, go farm your blink. Wait for Pang yeah. roll, then, yep. then go again. It's a bit too hard. Like right now, again, it's all on FPZ's roll. When they get this blink, which is in what? a moment, then they can keep fighting. But right now, it's basically you have roll, you go fight, roll is ended, you run away. So I think here, just spread out the map. You know, get your stuff done, get the blink, and then gather again. But Boom, I think, right now, Dyer's they're doing a good job. Tower. They're using it's the here as well. They have my favorite shot in the game, Major Prophet. The shit slaps. He's gonna push out every lane, and mid, we have some more fighting. Brio, oh. That, that, oh, that shot is... It seems broken to me. It seems ridiculous. It is. I it's one of the only reasons this hero's <laughs> probably playable as a core right now. Honestly. You can push, you can farm with it, because your vision is fantastic. What else do you ask for? Bottom this? lane, what's happening? Okay, Black hole is available, by the way. Oh, so it is. He's Saber waiting. Light's waiting. He knows there's but the Black so Hole, is... catches the Pango as well. Can they kill Yopaj at the time of the Black Hole? A little bit difficult, no violent strike because of the silence. There we go, we finally got it off on Timado. And that's going to be Yopaj dying, FPC the next target. Shield crash to give him a little bit more time. And that Blink Dagger will finally be off cooldown, so he can use it to get away. Saber Light, he's leading the charge. He just wanted to Malefice one more hero. Dimado also keeping the enemy team at bay as the push continues for TSM. Thanks to the Adelons, they can take this cliff pretty decently. Of course, you take the tier two down. Unless... Oh, never mind, they're all here. I don't know what this one there is. No roll on the Pango. Dimado still has the aging. Jackie is coming in. And will Jackie's presence be enough to force TSM to retreat? Yes, apparently so. Respecting Jackie. I guess they get to save their tower here. Okay, it's uh... Oh, they're smoking too. Okay, they wanna snap someone out. No black hole. Right. Queen is not too good on the mana pool, about half HP. Also, they sure. saw Enigma now keep it out of top. I wonder if they wanna go bottom or triangle, because whichever one of these two places you go, they should be a little separated, right? As the Enigma is still top. Triangle, the target. Triangle, the difficult target. They use some sort of organ? Apparently not. Tim is perfectly changed his stuns to make sure he gets a maximum stun time. That's the model. 
kill. Start the ages, so not an easy target to kill. Rolling Thunder probably do this. Disengage. They catch Moomiander in the middle of his uh, eye shards, and that might just be enough to kill off Moomiander. Well done. As Team Out also gets stunned towards the end of the roll. Team Out now gets control. The ages is lost. And Yopon is here. He has an Orchid. Team Out has no BKB. They can punish him hard here. Sprout first. Now the Orchid. Team Out, how are you getting out? He has the Quentin Blade in his inventory. Now find the Sprout ends. Two trains start wailing on him, and TSM will lose their carry. Boom. Recover back into this game. Good smoke by them. Boom are back. This, this is what I this is what I want to see them do, actually. I would never have expected them to death to spot tower and then go for a smoke, but they find the right angle, they find Ryle, some I wouldn't even say out of position, just a great smoke, right? There's FPZ, TP spot him, catches Dubu during his TP, so another uh, plus one kill. In the meantime, the towers kill. Uh, the towers kill the Treans, yeah right, so the Treans kill the tower, here we have the replay, we find Ryle, we have Tumato coming over, he still has Aegis, so here, I have to question Moon blinking in too early to like go for this aggressive snowball, because right. his monkey is still fine, you don't need to save him yet, you can try to stay out of the fight a bit more, maybe it's not even a good fight to begin with, right, your queen is already dead, but I would say that they kind of jumped the gun here, Moon, like, they just, they take the play, right? Great smoke, they take oh. more kills, and even here, they're on Tomato right now, so they're live in the game. They are, and because of the swarm, Tomato can't get away easily, so instead turns to get extra armor, but no chance, because Tim's once again to deal with the Amatoss. Mumiander also gets seen and rolled down, as FPZ gets the second kill of this fight. Once again, this duel just beats near the triangle. Ah, well. <laughs> I feel like I'm seeing the same nope. things over and over. Boom Radiant are doing all the right things right now. They have BKB on Weaver. Uh, Yopaj is about to finish his and 50 gold. Even FPZ, I must say, I am impressed. This guy is owning really hard in this game right now. It's not an easy triangle game at all, which is what we touched on earlier. And they're setting up on Bryal top. I don't think this is a kill, but at least they force a TP. Well, that was great. You don't let this guy push at the top. Look like look at the whole map right now. You pushed in bottom, True. you pushed in mid, you know that the next place they're gonna go is push top. And before you let this guy even kill one wave, you're already there. I think the uh, boom are regaining some confidence right now. You can see it in the gameplay, they're playing fast. It's not you know this like disconnected half-half type thing. It's right. They're all doing the same thing together. Love to see. That's Jackie. Yeah, find some heroes in the mid lane, by the way, but he's just there to potentially block him from going top and saving this tower, which is already taken by Yopaj. Does this mean that since Boom is in the driver's seat, can they take uh, bigger engagements, or are they still looking for these smaller pickoffs to take advantage of, you know, the NPC's global ability? It's definitely nicer for them if they fight in, like, a more open area. Uh, okay. Like if they don't just want to blindly smoke into TSM, because if we look at TSM's team fight, they have Black Hole and Monkey King ult, right? If they're together, when you go on them, you're gonna get turned around on really quick. So looking more so for pickoffs in the side lanes or open areas where you have vision, it's gonna be a lot easier for them. That's also where Nature's Prophet like thrives on the map, right? You have a guy setting up on a side lane, you find him, you TP, Orchid, kill. That's what they've been trying to do, and they've been successful with, but now TSM trying to thwart that strategy by uh, grouping up together. BKB is up on Queen. Okay, huge. This is what they're grouping up towards, or with, rather. They have Black Hole ready, they have all their spells. This teamfight could be great if they can just catch someone valuable. They check Roche first. It, there's no way Roche is up. <laughs> but, Not you know. yet, at least. Just to make sure, right? You know, time just just making sure, be... you know, the game isn't like bugging out ever since yeah, like yeah. this morning. A small shadow patch where Roche respawns after two minutes now. Who knew? Who knew? Right? Time can can always be uh, not linear, as Einstein predicted. So maybe they're walking through a black hole. Enigma is truly the person that can make that change. He can be on him. It's not get up. So. I wanted to say something and I forgot. So I'm trying to right now to use my brain power to regain whatever great thing I have to say. <laughs> I'm sure and it was great, Kevin. It's, well, it's, well, it's, it's that was such count. a good statement. I'm, I'm, I'm so you happy you're, you're here casting. Yeah. I'm doing a great job, I know. Thank Double you. Damage. <laughs> TSM, the smoke did not work out. You know, much like their, your brain farted there, the smoke kind of fizzled out and did nothing. And uh, now they go for a second one. Second try, Kezu. This one will work. Don't this worry. one will. Okay, they, 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 they want to go around. They do, and they find the tango, but FPZ's quick on the blink dagger. And he avoids the eye shards. Look at FPZ, Dyer's truly a gymnast. <laughs> Just avoiding all the obstacles as they yeah, push These guys on. are really quick on some of their items. It's actually yes. fucked up. Like the Hex Orchid links out. But okay, next objective of this game, again, yep. second Roche game is somewhat even, boom. Nah, I mean, they're, they're in the driver's seat for sure, but 
TSM still have very strong heroes, right? You have Monkey King scaling. He doesn't have his BKB yet. The mm -hmm. Deso, at least with some of the mistakes they did, didn't, you know, it hasn't fared out that well, right? He he needs his BKB. Saberlight with the Wraith Pack. Like, they kind of built these fighting tower. items and team attack. items, but they lost the fights coming afterwards. So it didn't truly work out. They need to fall back onto these BKBs now. And boom. Should look to keep pushing in the lanes and then have a favorable fight, maybe squeeze in one or two more engagements before they get to finish the BKBs on these two pusher heroes. I want to go back to the statement you said you're very impressed always by uh, the, the how quick they're on their fingers, the C players particularly. Have you ever gotten a chance to play a C pub, Kezu? You played yes, many of them? I... I don't want to do it again. You just join really? the game and some some guy is just yelling in the microphone about right. some pro player who's in the game. For Four different languages spoken to you as well. One of them is made up. Yeah. On that, I for mean, that they're, game they're funny and people seem kind of try hard, but it's also, I think, you need to be, you have a strong mental for different reasons. Yes, yes, indeed. That's why they get so good at clicking, man, because, like, there's no way you're communicating with your team, so you might as well get good at Dota, right? That's the That's true, true, true SEA it's experience. Basher on Pango. All right. Multiple reasons as to why this Pango is going to start owning this game. He already has been owning the whole time. His dating search was good. His team fighting is. Actually immaculate. It's been a while since I've seen a Pangolier have such high impact. And now he's gonna have a Basher. It's gonna be their win condition to also stop uh, Saberlight's Black Hole later in the game when he does have the BKB. She doesn't even have yet, but you know, Basher is gonna be good now too. Even against the Queen of Pain, more ways of canceling the TP. So great itemization by him too. Now we go, uh, let's see if they can find a fight here with this Basher. The Rosh has spawned. And Boom knows that Boom knows the Roche timing would be appropriate right now. But it's TSM was the vision because left three skellies in that pit. Those skeleton warriors, no matter where they are, can't really come back to home. You know, they, so they always do. I'm not even gonna look at them anymore. <laughs> so put, the, put the camera somewhere else. Roche is not important. I love that he yeah, also put three, not just one, right? But the, all three of them to make sure he gets superior vision. Uh, he, he knows that we, we can't we can't miss it. It's gonna be the one creep he'll keep picking up. <laughs> exactly. Uh, who's gonna go for the Roche here? Like, who, who has the advantage if they fight in the Roche pit? So, ideally, I believe if TSM are allowed to farm their BKBs, they will do that before doing anything. And as we can see, Boom, were, they're looking to not let that happen. They want to smoke through the wave, which is actually a very smart smoke. There's a super high chance someone will go here, like maybe a Queen of Pain. And even if you don't, you get to through, you get to go through the backline, maybe place yeah. a ward out of the smoke and jump someone, which is exactly what they're going for. Oh, and he gets jumped instead, and he's a core part of the lineup. Safety Mala, however, almost gets burnt down in a matter of seconds. Four dudes, no one's command, now go for Kim. Shallow came to save him, as FPT controls sitting with the backline, but FPT gets stopped with the Ice Charge first, and now the Black Hole, and FPT's finally down. This team fight can go the way of DSM. They've killed three heroes now, so it's just about catching up to Jackie, and they do so. They have the down the strike, and that's so much damage thanks to the Desolator, which allows them to finish off Jackie. And that's a team fight TSM was looking for. Great initiation from them. Ay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the idea that Boom had, I think, was amazing. Going through the top lane, if someone goes there, you kill him, you can fall back to Rosh, take over the jungle. If no one is in the lane, you keep going through there and you place a ward on the high ground. But instead of fighting in the ward that they place, they actually run into the tail end of TSM's ward on the high ground. They start the fight on the pango, so his team feels... Uh, oh, has maybe they felt a little force to go and help him. And TSM, they just held their position great. They get out a clutch black hole towards the end and... These Radiant's type of fights, top they're top very top hard top for top. Nature's Prophet. Like, uh, if we... A lot of people probably also watch the Major, like... Radiant's a lot of teams try this Nature's Prophet carry, and it looks very hit or miss, because if a fight starts like this, it is super hard for you to join. Like, where do you want uh, Yopash to TP there? Half the team fight is surrounded by a monkey ring, then there's a random black hole, sonic wave, and when it starts like this, it's really not at all how they want it to start. Okay. The Monkey King. It's gone, and there's a rolling thunder from FPC, but the Malachite is BKB, FPC is like, well, I'm out of here, oh, I'm out of here, yeah. A little bit of a strong yeah. driver there, but it worked out, right? He's not dead yet. In fact, Imado can still be in trouble. Play there, hat, catches him. Zalda trying to heal him back up. Put together your toys. Look at that ammo, just amazing! Back. And thanks to that, they get the monkey's first life. Second life, how's that gonna fare? No he got immediately. In the midnight post, but fighting though, a little bit difficult. FPC nice gets the kill on Bryle on the back lines. FPC, truly the hero you need, as Jackie dumps his TP from Saberlight, and Saberlight will die to the swarm, or to the clay here. One or the other. And between teams and FPZ, they destabilize this team fight for TSM. 
Uh, these team fights are so back and forth, actually. I love how both these teams are using their spells and fighting around each other. You have FPZ. If he gets to trade his role for the BKB, it's actually super clutch. His role will still last a little longer than the BKB initially, and it's super hard for the monkey to maneuver around the fight. And even when the role ends and monkey wants to like run away at the tail of the BKB, there's always the swashbuckle with a potential dash to keep it going. Beautiful avatars, and they just keep the fight going. Honestly, that avatar I like. I love when they do the, the thing where you toss people into your avalanche and it's like yeah. the ultimate tiny move. Bottom lane, they're looking for Timado. They are FPG to the cooldown there. They blink from being a ward and they're gonna find Timado without a BKB. That's huge, Kezu. He has buyback though. He but now really does BKB not want to use this. No. Let's see if they can stall it out without him. Okay, they took one of the big trades, Kezu. There's a chance. They shard now half the long took to over Johnny. He, he, he tried to play him by placing a new one, but jokes on you. <laughs> Somehow it doesn't kill it. Yeah, I actually thought it would, course. so let's really? nice try. No. I, I would have no. tried the same. I would have been like, haha, stupid inch. You, you don't no, understand, sorry. man. This shard, this shard is. Uh... Look at this, it's broken. <laughs> now he has the other Johnny, the Johnny 2.0. Fucking love Johnny. Watch, watch him go, giving vision for the team as in the top lane. Uh, Tim's is looking for the kill on Ryle, but Ryle knew the whole time. Orchids just in case here. Well done, bro. Okay, TSM are... I mean, they're just gonna wait for Timado. Um, when you get into these situations, you kinda need to make sure you... Again, get to stabilize the map. Boom have been in the driver's seat for a couple minutes, right? They got the Roche. They're pushing in all the lanes, they're getting kills on you. Right now, it's important you stabilize a little bit, maybe clear out one or two of the wards that TSM have on your side. The ones they have right now are maybe a bit hard to find, but get the lanes out of it, stabilize, and talk about your next play. You just got the Shiva's guard completed on Brile, so he should be feeling strong. Your BKB is very close on Stabilite. This could be another condition that you want to wait for, but let's see if Boom allow you to even have a breather. Yeah, I'm not sure. Boom doesn't feel... And they don't like breaks, right? They just like... I just want to keep Dark going. Trump, These guys do. don't know. They, they're, they're driving a car without a break. They don't know what that means. Uh, it's true. FPZ has never heard of break in his life, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I love that they went immediately for Dark Troll Summoner and left it alive. Just so you can witness I can't hear you. Kezu. I can't <laughs> hear you. I think I was dropped from the call again, guys. Oh, I'm so sorry. Let's talk about You're mentioning the, the, the Dark Lord's name. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> the, DSM, tell me, tell me about what they can do to get back into this game, though. Because, like you said, they're in the driver's seat here for Boom. Obviously, they're just kind of like trying to make sure that team fights go their way. But what's the best play you can make to make sure that this team fight is easier for you? Let's see. Maybe we need to hold that as Boom is being yeah. driven upon. Yeah, FPZ against again, no breaks. He goes down to the bottom. And hopefully kills off Dubu here. Come on, they are helping out Dubu. They don't let Dubu die, but they're fighting his Tims. He is not in that position. Tim will die with Saberlight, it seems like. But that's still a good fight for Boom. We think that uh, support, a second support's on the way as well, as Dubu cannot survive against the Sweeper. Why did TSM choose to fight that? They probably felt like, okay, this Pango, his role is ending soon. They're using so much on the end, we can take this fight, but... They were like kind of overstepped his boundary there for sure. Yep. Right now, if you're TSM, you need to wait for this BKB on Saberlight. It will only be the Pango who can stop the black hole. And even if he does that, it means that he's either not rolling or he has to cancel his roll to potentially swash buckle you, right? As Tomato. A little bit of trouble should be okay here. That's not the BKB. Uh, I guess they're gonna lose the racks perhaps here. 10 seconds for the Enigma and still no BKB. Dyer's bottom barrel. Okay, they're gonna respect them attack. enough, actually, because the Enigma is coming back. Like you said, no BKV, but very, very close. Of course, yeah. the Bastion is always a threat for him, though, right? Oh, absolutely. But there's always some stuff like you can try to position here on the front of you. Maybe they can eat the bash, or you have Eidolons or an Edge Creep. So, what TSM need to do, step one, you wait for this BKV. You're gonna have it in a moment. Okay, step two, right. let's talk about how they want to fight. They have two four staffs. They have Queen of Pain, who's super tanky with BKB. They should abuse this mobility from the Queen, have him go in, you know, eat some spells, have the end tank a couple spells, and play a slow fight with the Enigma. They're most important. The okay. key to this game is going to be him having a good black hole with hopefully a Sonic Wave follow up or Monkey King having a ring or getting out a couple of punches. So it's about Queen and Edge in the front. Abuse a little bit with your blinks, your four staff, make some time and allow Saberlight to, you know, go for the black hole and be as patient as he needs to be. Okay, okay. 
Well, I like that point. Uh, I think they, they can still do it, especially when they're defending their own high ground. That's why Boom is looking for smokes outside Dyer's of that high ground. Is under yeah. attack. No, absolutely. How they, they... I was going to ask, how um, courageous can TSM be with their plays? Like, how much can they, like, de push and, and go away and try to, like, cut, cut lanes, stuff like that? Not too far. The Boom heroes are very good at picking you off. Even if you BTB, it doesn't matter. There's always the Basher available. You have a Nation's Prophet that's threatening you at all times, uh, Gleipnir and Weaver. So for now, what they're gonna do is likely play as a ball for a little bit more, try to de-push the areas that are close to your base, maybe take out a couple of wards, and as soon as this Roshan timer starts going to zero, like that it can start respawning in one minute, they need to start branching out more and more into their own jungle, because this game will be about the third Roshan. You do not want to give up an Aegis when you are playing Enigma because it will completely counteract right. your black hole. So they need to fight this, take back the jungle, maybe talk about their buybacks, how they want to execute the fight, which should be somewhat similar to what we just talked about in terms of how they should execute. Dyer's mm. top tower. Yeah, we're gonna see the saber light, uh, by the way, now completed his VKB, so they have one good fight in them before the rush, or around the rush here. But of course, like you said, if they use the black hole early, they lose the rush as a result, that's it's also a loss no matter what. Kimado is in a, that was a somewhat risky position, of course, only for one second. Steven's now smoked up around him. Yeah. They still Yukar see him, of course. Fishing top a little bit with his dreams to push. That's Gamble a good one by TSM. James has been uh, found out now. Yols takes away the slow from the Shivas, and now he's no longer stuck in the shards. Oh, down with a Yols and a good avalanche to reset this fight. FPT, in fact, wants to go in. Maybe that's in a good position this time. On the wave, gets rid of MPZ like the panel said, just push him back, push him back. And MPZ is not, not able TSM. to continue this. Two BKBs use as a big IR, can they? Throwing Thunders down. They want to punish this, but what a good roll up. Quick fingers clutch. once again on FPZ. Clutch roll up, very clutch roll up. As in the meantime, the top tier three tower went down to the Treants. You're part doing a great job at, you know, just keeping Surrender up the pressure attack. while yep. also being aware and ready to fight. TSM want to continue to defend their area here, even with two BKBs down. Dyer's their roll is not up yet, killed. so once this roll starts going to like 15, 10 seconds, I think they want to step up. As they already do it now. They are it's... trying to finish off FPZ, but he had the shield crack pop to him, and now with the help of the Dazzle, it's just a bit too yeah, difficult. Not like that is BKB. Not sure about this one, Saberlight. What's the plan? It's just to kill Tim. At least get something out of this, but Tim's a bit too tanky. In goes Timado, gets the strike, the shallow grave saving Tim's. But there's residual damage onto him. So then DOD from behind, Yopash comes in. Black Hole solo for Yopash, just kill the MP. Follow up, there's the Walker's punch. They cancel the Black Hole, but it's fine with Yopash is already dead. So I did his job, Ryle though, it's still stuck in the Rolling Thunder. And now it's Jackie, the janitor, cleanup crew, making sure to finish off Ryle. Going for Monkey King next. Timado is a bit too fast in those jumps though. But FPZ, he knows where he went. FPZ can oh, bye, see bye. everything. He does the roll up, just in case. Can get rid of the Malphite. There's the roll up for the stun. But instead they fight the Dazzle. Skev is dead. And TSM, we go with the buyback. They want to fight this beautiful avalanche from Tim. Now the Glinker from Jackie. Go for Bri uh, Bryle. Bryle with a bug on him. They still see him for the battle strike. Gives him a couple more seconds. Bryle's dead though. Even with Spider Legs, he can't get away from the bug. Jackie, he won Saber Light. Gets stopped by the Walrus Sponge. But no exterminator can bring down Jackie. He's going to bring down the Walrus instead. As Saber Light gets killed off by Yopaj. Yopash is unstoppable. He went for the remove teleportation cooldown and you really saw that play in that fight. Uh, the way Boom are playing fights is they're making it really, really hard for like TSM to even potentially think about or like organize the fight. Tix is going in into like three heroes. Abba toss again. He forces them to use their last BKB that they had available with the Enigma. Then the fight keeps going. Yopash goes in the back, forces the Black Hole. His team runs over. They don't get to save him in time, but it doesn't matter. He can buy back. Black Hole is done. Keep the fight going. And now they're pressuring the two points. No, they can because the Mada has no BKB. Only one comes command. And instead, they kill up Nubu. They'll break for him just in case. Silver's on Yopa. Does FPZ keeps the Mada under control? Is there anything this man can't do? Please, Another. someone stop him. Oh. They're actually not going to get the last stun. But it doesn't really matter. Timado for the ultimate. But that's it. The ancient's going down. Boom will win game number two. The first win of the day and of the tournament.